Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 96 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Today, I am working on coolant. Uh, that's kind of the next stage of this build. Uh, so for that, we're going to want a few things. Uh, we're going to definitely want some pressurized fluid conduits. Um, we're going to want to extract from there. Uh, and then I think we just need to throw lapis in here, and that's going to get us the basics. Um, so last episode, we started working on a reactor type system. That's slowish, but we can speed that up with overclockers at some point. I had overclockers being auto-crafted, and they don't seem to be working 100% right now. Do we have any overclockers up here? We do, in this electric furnace. Oh, in this macerator, even. Nice. So that should speed things up quite a bit. Nice. All right, cool. Uh, we'll take a look at the reactor we built in a minute. First, I want to go to the east and extract, and you will get coolant. Beautiful. So for a stack of lapis, we get eight buckets of coolant, which makes perfect sense because it's eight lapis per bucket. Uh, so I've requested quite a bit of um, production of lapis dust. Um, macerating dense lap. Ooh, we can macerator a block to get nine at a time. That's kind of cool. Can we sag mill a block at a time? We definitely can. That would probably be quite a bit faster than what I'm doing at the moment. So let's come to you and cancel the lapis dust that I just requested. Get the stack of lapis. Oh, that's just as fast. Nice. All right, that's cool. That is equally as fast, and that will get me much more dust. Um, let's get item conduits. Let's get a chest. Let's put this away. I see two area. We're going to that and that. And the up will be extract and the down will be insert. Beautiful. That should get us lots and lots of coolant. Because frankly, we have more lapis than we know what to do with, right? Like we've got so much lapis, I don't care. Um, if I was being more efficient, I would be converting, I think it's it's a smaller number of lapis. It's either one or two lapis per distilled water gets us coolant. But I'm gonna get like, however much lapis this gets me, right? We're gonna convert. Are you done sag milling? For the most part, the answer is yes. Nice. You know what we could do? Fastest? There we go. Beautiful. I see two area, lapis dust. And that'll do, right? So that'll get us lots and lots of coolant, which we're gonna use uh, in a little bit here to start our reactor and get things running. So there's a couple things we're gonna wanna set up. Um, so let's take a look at this here. First, let's get the reactor built. So I have to come up with the design that I'm gonna use. And I had a fancy one um, that I looked up last episode and it looks like it'll work for us. So I'll come back in a minute once I've got that ready. All right, so there's two more things we need to worry about here, okay? Uh, first off, let's pop over here. I need to get myself a reservoir. So that gets four from that, right? Perfect. You and you, and we'll get ourselves a couple buckets of water, which I should have a water source out here somewhere-ish. Perfect, cool. Um, I'm gonna want to automate the processing of uranium. So we want to get uranium processed to an efficient point. Um, now, I do need to do a little bit of testing. I'm not sure if my draconic armor will protect me from uranium-based death. 
So uranium will kill you because of uh, radiation poisoning. The draconic armor might automatically heal my radiation poisoning. And if that's the case, then I don't need a radiation suit. If it's not, then I'm gonna need a radiation suit. And a radiation suit is not hard to make. Um, that's from Deep Resonance. Uh, there's the one, hazmat suit, industrial cast. So, so um, hazmat suit, armor piece, leggings, uh, you want a scuba helmet for the helmet, and for boots, you want rubber boots. Black quartz, void crystal, rubber boots. These guys. Cool? So those four items together make up a radiation suit. And if you're wearing that, you won't take damage from radiation poisoning. If you're not wearing that, and you hold uranium in your hand, you take a whole lot of damage and you'll probably die. So we're going to test it and see what happens with our draconic helm. Not sure. Probably could have tested this in a test world. Frankly, feeling a little bit lazy. If I die, I die. I'm gonna set this all up downstairs. So what I'm gonna do um, is request the following network transmitter, network receiver, and network card. Uh, Cause I'd like to be able to access my refined storage network from the basement area. Um, now, if I was being super duper smart about this, I could probably have all my coolant and stuff handled by my refined storage system, but I'd rather uh, just be a little bit safe and smart and and keep it all within drums. So we won't use refined storage at all because technically then my IC2 nuclear reactor would be dependent upon my RF system uh, and bad things could happen. Uh, we don't want explosions. Explosions are bad. So um, network guys, are you ready to roll? You've got a network card, which is good news. Network receiver and transmitters should be a moment or two away. Um, and should I make a grid for access to stuff? Meh, maybe. How hard would it be to get myself a grid? I have a fluid grid. How about a regular old grid? Not as easy as one might hope. All right, auto crafting a little bit later. Getting there. I wish the things that made these could be sped up faster than they currently can be. Come on, you can make a destruction core. This way we at least have access to our items from that basement. Nice. And let's get some cables as well. Might have some on me. Yeah, I do. All right, cool. So let's get this set up first. Into the basement we go with our network receiver. This guy ready to be shift clicked. Um, now I'm thinking along this mall might be a good place to set up the uranium processing. So if I had a machine here, it could be even inside the wall might be cool. So we could have, um, so, so to get uranium processed, um, uranium fuel rods, you can't look up the recipe, but I know that it's one of these dudes. Yeah, it needs to go into the fluid canning machine. Um, but the best way to get this is to process in a thermal centrifuge, your purified crushed uranium ore. That will get you a tiny pile of uranium, which is 235, and a big pile of uranium, which is 238, which are two different types of uranium. Um, you could process crushed uranium ore, but you're more efficient to go purified, and I'll show you why. Um, so that's your best bet with these things. And then these guys combine to make enriched uranium nuclear fuel, which is what gets placed in the fuel rods. Cool. Uh, and those can be combined into double or quad fuel rods, which have different functions inside your nuclear reactor. So to get the purified crushed uranium, we have an ore washer washing crushed uranium. To get crushed uranium, you throw uranium ore into a macerator. So it's macerator to ore washing plant to thermal centrifuge to bottler. But there's also a crafting step in between. Um, in between those is the crafting step to get this enriched 235 plus 238. So we'll probably want to have those machines, right? So macerator, ore washer, thermal centrifuge, and then auto craft, and then uranium fuel rod. So let's do the three. We'll set up an automation line so that all uranium gets processed that way. It'll dump the 238 and 235 into the system, and then we'll auto craft on demand the 230, the enriched uranium nuclear fuel. So that should be cool. So one, two, three for processing, and then on demand crafting of the bottler. Cool? The fluid solid canning machine thing. Okay, so with that in mind, um, we'll probably want, what I'll do is throw behind this wall here, 
And we'll also have to have IC2 power down here. But remember, we have a sneaky way to get IC2 power down here, which should be cool. Uh, but we'll get our network receiver set up. We'll shift click this dude so that you've got the linked coordinate thingy. And then we'll go upstairs and set this up so that our grid at least has stuff set up. Transmitter, check. That was supposed to be a torch. Cool. So that's good. So then I'm gonna set something like this up. Okay, that will be responsible for charging our MFE. So we'll build an MFE with an energy crystal and we'll set that up in the basement down there. That's probably your best bet. The other option obviously would be running cable down there, but who wants to do that? Not me. In fact, I could probably move this system because I haven't used it just yet. So why don't we do that? Let's get uh, our wrench here. We're gonna steal this energy crystal. You will probably lose the energy that you have in you or at least some of it. We'll take you and you. And we'll go upstairs to our IC2 area, jump into the basement. Uh, we'll probably want some gold cables. And the other thing we'll probably want is transformer upgrades. Let's get eight of them would be cool. Uh, and the reason we need eight is we need two in each machine, right? So just like this MFE is powering everything and we've got two in each machine, we're gonna want that set up. So trans, there's probably a lot of auto crafting going on here. Not bad at all. So we'll let that cook and then we'll get the basics set up. So down here to the basement, cause I can, once I have the grid down here, be cool. So we'll get a cable here with the grid. Awesome. Um, probably would be cool to make this a crafting grid. Advanced processor and crafting table, huh? I'm gonna have to go do that manually, aren't I? So crafting table, back in a sec. All right, so crafting grid down here, ready to roll. Uh, and then also behind this wall will kind of be our, so imagine we're running you know, power to these four machines right here. I'm not gonna hook it up just yet, but one, two, three, four will be the power. In fact, why don't I not hook that up just yet? Because, I mean, even though I said I'm not gonna hook it up just yet, I really don't wanna hook it up just yet. So let's get our, MFE here. And you do have some power left in you, which is cool. Uh, we'll put this guy here. We'll have our item conduit. And then on the down, nope. We want to extract always active energy crystals on the green channel. And we'll insert on the brown. And then on the west, we will insert on brown and extract on green, always active this, right? So down, insert brown, extract green, west, insert green, extract brown. And that should be cool. So if we check this dude, he's not gonna be good right now because he's not completely full. That is the fault of it being partially. So now that it's completely full, it should actually be charging right now, right here. Beautiful, that's working perfectly. That's what I'd wanna see, nice. And then when this empties out, it'll plop back out of there. Perfect, cool. Okay, so that's stage one of the build. My transformers should be gun good and done by now, perfect. So now let's get uh, the three machines that we need. A macerator, 
Oh, and you should be in JEI synchronized. So I need, I'm gonna definitely need three machine frames. I'll just get four because I know I'm gonna need it anyway eventually. And might as well get four of you. Nice. So that's Macerator, that's Machine 1. You're going to get one, two of these dudes. And then next machine will be Ore Washing Plant. So we just need two electric motors. Did I teach you coils? I did. That shouldn't be too bad to get. One, two, cool, and you're going to be the same setup, right? So, or washing plant, one, two. You guys should have power now. Perfect. The ore washing plant's going to need water. We'll take care of that in a minute. The thermal centrifuge, I don't think we've made one of these yet. This is an expensive-ish recipe, but we should be able to do it. Let's get two more sets of coils. Uh, we're actually going to need four more sets of coils. So you're set, you're good. The laser is probably usually the hardest part of this recipe. And it needs an advanced machine casing, which I did teach it how to make, so that's cool. Let's get the laser ready, mining laser. So you just need four advanced alloys and a circuit. Energy crystals, did I teach you how to make these? Probably not. Let's make one real fast. Uh, this guy. Luckily, I have one of these bad boys right here. Let's borrow, for now, these dudes until I get my auto crafting of these fixed. You should be able to do that fast, right? Nice. Take that upstairs with me to my compressor. Pretty quick. And there we go. We've got a laser. Nice. Which can be used to make a thermal centrifuge, which I've got everything for. Now this is already a tier 2 machine, where macerators and ore washing plants are tier 1. So technically, I should only need one th transform upgrade, but I'm going to put two in there because I crafted them anyway. Cool. And you should have plenty of power coming in perfect that's what I want to see all right next up let's get the reservoir set up this is easy you and you so that's infinite water right there right um, and then we will have I mean technically I could be doing this a different way right um, we could be export busing, but it honestly doesn't matter, right? So here's ore washing plant. We basically want to auto extract from there and ta-da, nice. Then what we'll probably want to do is, so let's do, there's an upgrade for industrial craft that's really useful here. Basically, I might need to interact with more sides of these blocks, come to think of it, but we'll see what happens. Um, but we'll think, well, I'm, one way or another, it's not a problem. We can always use the phantom faces, right? Easy peasy. Uh, we'll probably wind up having to use a phantom face. Where are those upgrades? It's the ejector upgrade, right? That's fluid, ejector upgrade, that's what we want. Nice. So I'm gonna want one, two of these. 
Okay, and the way this works is, I believe you shift right click, automatically output to the south side. So that means that side. So if I put this ejector upgrade in here and here, right, check out what happens when I get uranium. Boom. We place uranium in here, and it automatically ejects to the south side, which is here. This gets washed, and it's going to automatically eject to here. And this is going to, now the heat of this thing needs to increase. We need to heat it up. Um, there's two ways we can do this. We can wait for it to need heat, or we can give it a redstone signal to keep heat on it at all times. Probably going to do the latter. Okay. Um, so that, that thing, it only starts heating up when it has something to process, but by putting a redstone on it, it says keep it heated at all times. Of course, that uses a little bit of EU, but it's no big deal. Uh, I don't think... This will speed up the rate at which it processes the ore, but it will not speed up the rate at which it heats. So overclocker upgrades will help once it's fully heated up, but not once, uh, or yeah, not help it speed up faster, right? Uh, so then the last thing we're probably gonna want is an export bus or an exporter and an importer. So that's cool. Um, now we might need to be doing a little bit of dyer wire in here because we're also going to need to import the stone dust and the tiny piles of lead dust. So let's get another one of these. My exporter should be done. My importer is good. And we're probably gonna want two phantom faces. Cool. So those shouldn't be too bad to get. Put these guys away for the time being. Come on, Phantom Faces. Don't make me go check on you. Ah, beautiful. Love it when things work the way they're supposed to. Such a nice feeling. Okay, so I should be able to just export directly to the macerator. There's no special handling there. So what we'll do is we will just say, you know what I'm gonna do? Where's my wrench? We're gonna that, that, cool. Um, and then we can run cabling however we need here. So you will get your exporter. You're gonna export uranium. So nothing fancy with that. Uh, we'll get some cabling here. Cool. And uh, the phantom faces for these guys can really kind of go anywhere. So let's set up one phantom face here and one phantom face here. You can be the ore washing plant. And you can be the thermal dude. So you're going to need an import bus that's filtered to only import tiny piles of lead and stone dust. Okay, so you're gonna be whitelist, tiny piles of lead and stone dust, and you are gonna basically import everything from this guy. Cool, so that should have cleared this and cleared that, beautiful. And the redstone signal should keep the heat up, even though there's not an item in there. Nice. And then you can get some uranium. And your job, which by the way, speaking of uranium, just curious. It hurts, but it, <laughs> it does cure me. So at least it somewhat protects me. Uh, sorry, microphone or headphone users. That probably hurt a little bit. But at least it protects me. Right, so I'm gonna two, two, and two. This doesn't have to be particularly fast, but speeding it up a little bit will definitely help. Uh, so you are supposed to extract or export uranium. You were supposed to go in here. Cool. So then this thing is gonna run down the line. It'll process process all the stuff. This thing will heat it up, and we should be cool. Nice. And nobody's choking on power at the moment with a upgrade of two overclockers? Yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. So we are now processing all of our uranium, which is beautiful. 
How cool is that? Gonna have to fancy up this room at some point, but at the very least, we've got uranium processing going, uh, which is cool. And everything is complete and compact behind this wall, right? How cool is that? We'll eventually have like a crafter on a bottler here or something like that, but we'll uh, we'll get to that. The fluid canning machine is what we need. The JEI lookups for that are not ideal. Hey, look, our energy crystal got refilled. That's kind of cool. I like everything about this. It's actually working really well. And it'll take a while, but at the end of the day, we'll have plenty of uranium. All right, so let's go upstairs now. Whoosh. Nice. You guys are all running, trying to refill this thing perfectly. Good. All right, next stages of this build. Let's get all the components that we're going to need for the nuclear reactor, excepting the uranium, um, and we'll be good to go. So for the nuclear reactor, we're going to need components. Basically, the way this works is you put items inside the reactor, and those items interact with each other to generate heat. Uh, they all have different purposes, um, and I'm going to give you the basic gist of it. Uh, uranium goes in and it creates heat using uranium as a fuel source and when uranium's in the reactor it basically generates heat and that heat is used to create the superheated steam uh, which is created from the hot coolant right so it's going to convert cold coolant to hot coolant that's it cool so that's stage one uh, but it also heats up the uh, reactor casing which is bad we don't want the reactor casing to get too hot because it starts to explode when it gets too hot so to protect against that uh, we're basically going to want to have um, some items in there to dissipate that heat. And those include uh, these things. So you've got heat vents, which dissipate the heat, uh, heat exchangers, which transfer heat between different components within it, and then um, reactor plating, which helps to give the reactor a longer period of time before it would explode. Cool? That's the gist. So we're going to need a certain number of each of these. And the layout is very important. So for more in-depth details, look at a, pra a past Industrial Craft Spotlight that I've done or check out the Industrial Craft forums. But basically, I'm going to go create all the components I need. Uh, so I'm going to need some reactor platings, which is just these guys. I'm going to need some component heat vents, these guys, which require heat vents. So lots of crafting involved here. Uh, and then we're also going to need overclocked heat vents, which I lost my place. Where'd they all go? Here they are. Overclocked heat vents. Lots and lots of things. Um, we might even need an, a component heat exchanger, a couple of these things, right? So I'm going to go teach off camera. I'm going to get all these items that I need. I'm going to teach a bunch of these recipes. I'm probably going to need more crafters. So let's get like 10 more of these bad guys. Uh, and we'll be back in a few minutes after I've done all this work off camera. All right, so pretty much good to go here. Good enough for me. So all these components should go into here. That's most of them. Uh, so those are the heat vents. You know what else I wanted was the reactor plating. Which requires knowing how to make lead plates. I forgot these guys. So we should, in theory, be good now with everything we need to know how to make. Out of curiosity, how's my power doing? We're doing OK. We might be using power at a rate faster than we're generating it, but hey, what are we making a nuclear reactor for anyway? Um, so we've got uranium ore processing. I'm going to start kicking off. So for example, if I wanted uh, a heat vent, I should be able to craft one of these. And you'll see that there's many steps involved, obviously, but it should be good. You know how to make all the things, which is cool. Perfect. That's what's up. All right, good. Uh, and I taught you how to make component heat vents, which are also a bunch of steps. 
but that also shouldn't be too much of a problem. Sweet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all the components that I need uh, off camera, and then we'll come back next episode, and we will install the components. Maybe I'll install them off, off camera. Um, yeah. So basically, I'll show you guys how to install them now, and then we will install them off camera. So you basically want to create your reactor design that you think will work for you, uh, either by following, you know, a... Uh, uh, pre-made one that you can find on the industrial craft forums or um let me put you guys away for now right yeah totally uh and you and you probably don't need you at the moment nor you nor you yeah so either find a pre-made one on the industrial craft forums or don't need you guys either Go ahead and uh, come up with a design yourself. That totally works. Uh, and basically, you just put the components in the specific slots. So where you put it matters. So it's going to be important to place them in the right slots. Um, and then when we turn on the reactor, we'll see things happening. Cool? But for now, we're going to wrap up the episode. So Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time with most of this reactor filled, and I'll talk about how those reactor components work. For now, take it easy.